Welcome to Kikaz Brand Show. I'm Andre Menkov, the founder of Trademark Factory. And today I bring you John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire, an award-winning podcast where he interviews today's most inspiring entrepreneurs seven days a week. With over 2,000 episodes and seven figures a year in revenue, JLD has shown the world the power of podcasting. And if you didn't know, the way he does it is he schedules a bunch of interviews back to back in just 15 minute slots. So this is probably going to be one of the shortest episodes of Kick-Ass Brand Show. But in this interview, he shared some amazing tips, some great ideas, and some super inspirational words of wisdom that you definitely don't want to miss. So let's jump right into this, JLD. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. And uh, it's great to have you. And uh, look, I got a question for you. Um, you're obviously extremely successful today, but I'm, Here's, here's what I'm wondering. Was there ever a time when you're like, yesterday I was not yet successful and today I am? When was that moment when you're like, that's it? The there, there was a moment. The moment actually was six months into my podcast. I, up to that point, had not really made any revenue, any income, but I was seeing my listenership grow and it was at a pretty good number. It was over 100,000 listens per month. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really, really seeing any monetary value coming from that. But then I got a call on a Friday afternoon from a sponsor, advertiser, broker. And he basically said, John, I want to pitch your show to some of my clients. What do you think? I said, go for it, do it. And by that Monday, he had booked out my show um, for over $12,000 in sponsorship revenue for the following month. So I went from working, you know, six months on the show, not really seeing any monetary return to all of a sudden over the course of one weekend, I was generating $12,000 a month in revenue from sponsorships. And it looked like it was only going to go up from there. And it ended up only going up from there. Of course, at that moment in time, I didn't know that, but I was like, I feel like this is the start of something great. This is awesome. And, 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 uh, I know that you, you keep mentioning that there's one thing that you're anti, it's anti-boredom, right? So when you get bored of something, you switch to something else. You've done more than 2,000 episodes. How do you not get bored of, how does that not become a routine? You just choose something in life that you enjoy doing. You know, for me, I literally enjoy having conversations with interesting people. And to me, entrepreneurs are really interesting people. I love hearing their life story. Like, I'll be honest with you, it fascinates me, the amount of people that I'll sit down with and I'll have a whole conversation with them and they won't have asked me a single question about me, my business, my life during the entire conversation. And, I, and that just befuddles me because I am so curious, everybody that I meet, I am so curious about where they come from, how do they get to this moment in time? What are they doing? What are they excited about? What are they terrified about? I want to know all of those things. And man, it just shocks me when I talk to people for an extended amount of time and they don't ask one question. I mean, just besides being unbelievably self-absorbed, it just, it, it's shocking to me for another reason of just like, wow, like you literally aren't curious about that other person. When for me, it's just like breathing. Like I just love hearing those stories. So because I chose something that I was going to do every single day that I really find interesting and fascinating, I love doing it. Like I bet you can approach some of the best surfers in the world. You can be like, how can you go out every single day and just sit on a board in the ocean and wait for a wave that may or may not come. And then when it finally comes, you ride it for th three minutes and then you've got to go do it all over again. How boring is that? To me, that's incredibly boring. To them, it's heaven. That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. And she leads me to, to my next question about 
consistency, right? There's one thing I realized is as I study successful people, successful businesses, it really all boils down to consistency, right? Like the, the professional musicians that go out and play exactly the same thing every single concert. And uh, that's why people love them because they know that no matter what mood they're in, no matter you know, what happens at home, they go out there and they do it. And the same thing with uh, entrepreneurship. I believe consistency is what separates professionals from amateurs. How do you cultivate that in you? Because what you're doing is just phenomenal. So I think it's an interesting point that you bring up um, with, with singers, because I was actually just thinking about that the other day when I was listening to you 2 and they were singing the song, um, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, how many times has Bono sang that song? Now, that is repetition. There is nothing. He is saying the same words to the same music to just a different crowd of people. Now that is repetition. Now for me, you know, when I'm having an interview and a conversation with somebody, there's never two conversations that are the same. Every conversation is different. Every story that I elicit from my guests is different. So there is so much uh, variation that goes into what I do. Whereas for Bono, he is literally just word for word repeating the same thing years, decades, thousands of times. But guess what? He loves singing. He loves the craft. He loves performing. Mm -hmm. So if you can find that thing that you love doing, like me loving conversations with entrepreneurs, there are people out there that will get bored stiff of that after a couple of weeks. I would get bored stiff going back to that surfing example. I would probably be bored singing the exact same song a hundred times in the course of a year. But that's not what I chose to do. I chose to do something that I continuously find interesting and curious and, and really thought provoking on a day to day basis. And I think that's what, that's what successful people do because when you find it interesting and curious and thought provoking, what it is you do, you will do it day after day after day after day. And that's how you win because you're doing one thing more than anybody else is willing to do it. You're doing one thing and you're getting better at doing it because you're honing your skills every time you're doing it, you're getting a little bit better. And that is exactly why successful entrepreneurs win because they just are better at one thing than anybody else in their field. And thank you so much for being a part of this conversation, for sharing all this wisdom. Yeah. How do you, where's the line between being persistent and being delusional about your idea? You know. So what's really interesting is there's a great book by Seth Godin called The Dip. And in the book, The Dip, he talks about how a lot of businesses start on fire and they kind of have this like nice trajectory. And then, you know, we all hit this dip where we either flatten out and we plateau or we actually do kind of go down a little bit. And then we have this like kind of dip period. And that's where a lot of businesses and people give up because, you know, it was fun right here. This is no fun. This is definitely not fun. And then this is definitely not fun. So that dip is where a lot of people fail. But the reality is successful businesses stick around and persist long enough to get out of the dip. Um, they stick around and the dip comes and the dip goes and they find success on the other side of that dip. Now, there's also a point in the book that he brings up where sometimes the only way to get out of a hole is to just stop digging and you need to stop digging. So that's again going back to the theme of this conversation which i think is really valuable and important is if you're really loving what you're doing and you are inspired by it and it interests you and you are you know that you're improving and you know that you're doing what it takes to get a little bit better every single day then you stay in the dip and you stay through and you find you know that goal that could be just three feet away it might be 300 feet away but it might be three feet away you persist you have that perseverance. But if you're in the dip and you're like, huh, I just don't know if I'm really interested or curious about this, that's your red flag. That's when you say, okay, you know, this is not exactly what I was meant to be doing. I'm not finding the curiosity. I'm not finding the thought provoking activities that I need. How can I pivot? How can I shift? How can I adjust to try something else? Because most people need to swing that bat hundreds of times before they make that direct connection. So 
it's either you're in a dip and if you love it, stick through that or identify that you're just digging a deeper hole, stop digging and try something new. Cool. Um, I noticed you have some interesting story with, uh, well, history, even better, with uh, your trademarks. I know you started filing your own on your own a while ago, and now you have an attorney taking care of that. You got a bunch of them. Some of them went through, some of them didn't. Uh, how did you realize that uh, protecting your brand is, actually has value? And uh, when and why did you realize that it's time for you to start, for you, for, for, it's time for you to stop doing it on your own and actually have somebody do it for you. Yeah. So if you're spending your time, your energy, your money building a brand, then guess what? That is a brand worth protecting because if you're going to spend all of this equity, time, bandwidth, money, whatever it might be, creating something that other people are recognizing that you're standing for then you need to also be willing to invest time, energy, and money to protect that as well. Because somebody can come in if you are not protected and they can pose, they can impersonate your brand. And as Warren Buffett likes to say, it takes 20 years to build a great reputation and five minutes to ruin it. And somebody else impersonating you can ruin your brand just as easily and even much more easily in a lot of ways than you, than you can and will because you obviously have your best interest at heart where somebody else may not. So when you have that trademark, when you have that brand protection, you're in a position where you can rightfully so be armed and ready to fight off things along those lines. And for me, I'm not a trademark expert. I'm a podcasting expert. I make my money interviewing successful entrepreneurs. I'm going to spend my time doing the things that I'm best at. And then I'm going to hire and invest in people and companies that are great at doing what they do on their time so that I can keep doing what I'm great at doing on my time. And that is exactly how you scale and leverage your time is by focusing on your specific tasks that you're great at and spending and investing money in areas that you're just simply not. That's deep. Uh, I know you've launched uh, your uh, one big idea. How'd you come up with that? And uh... How's, how, how's that going for now? So, you know, all my best ideas have come from my listeners. And so I identified that after interviewing 2,000 successful entrepreneurs, one of the major things that my guests on my show who are successful, they have in common is they have one big idea and they go all in on that big idea. They literally go all in and they just dominate. They dominate that one big idea. And I was seeing my listeners, they were struggling. They were trying all these different ideas or they just didn't have an idea or they did have a pretty big idea, but they didn't have clarity or focus or direction. They were struggling with those things. And so I created your big idea as a training to, to in under an hour, get people from either no idea or a lot of ideas, but you're not sure which is the big idea or you have a big idea, but you need clarity, focus, and direction from any one of those three camps to your big idea, singular, so that you have your big idea that you can go all in. Um, it's a completely free training. It's at yourbigidea.io, and uh, it's helped thousands of people get their big idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll share that link, uh, and uh, hopefully it will help my audience to get a piece of you. Cool. So before we close this, is there one question that nobody's ever asked you, but you always wish they did? No. <laughs> it's probably because I've been interviewed thousands of times, and I think every combination of questions um, have been asked to me. But, you know, one question that I really do like that people ask me is for something that I really believe in or a quote that really has inspired me over the years because I think it is meaningful to really have that North Star, that focus. And so for me, I love this Albert Einstein quote, which is, try not to become a person of success, but rather a person of value. And I have really hung my hat on that quote, and I have always said, hey, how can I be a person of value? And that's how I approach every day, everything that I do project-wise, business-wise, how can I become a person of value? That's my focus. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for being on this interview, sharing your wisdom. 
and wish you all the best and uh, stay in touch. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take Thank care. You. I hope you enjoyed this episode with John Lee Dumas as much as I did. But my question for you is, is what are you going to do to implement what you've learned in your business? What step are you going to take to get you closer to that success you've always wanted? Leave a comment below and I and JLD will be happy to look at it and maybe even respond. And make sure you sign up for John's course. Three hour free course. I'm sure it's going to be full of nuggets that you definitely don't want to miss. And I'll see you in the next video.